Hello YouTube family! We are back again with another video. In this video, we share the some memories of the American legends who died today and in the last few days. Before starting this video, please subscribe our channel. Let's start! Robert Watts Robert Watts, the esteemed British film producer known for his significant impact on Hollywood, has passed away at the age of 86. Born in London on May 23, 1938, Watts was immersed in the film industry from a young age, with his grandfather Walter Mee being a prominent screenwriter. This familial connection ignited his passion for cinema, ultimately positioning him as a key player in some of the most celebrated franchises in film history. Watts began his career in the 1960s, taking on roles as a second assistant director and production manager for films like Repulsion and 2001 A Space Odyssey. However, it was his work with George Lucas on the original Star Wars trilogy that solidified his legacy. As a production supervisor for the 1977 film, Watts played a crucial role in realizing Lucas's ambitious vision, despite skepticism from 20th Century Fox. His relentless efforts in location scouting and logistical management were vital to the film's success, leading to his roles as associate producer for The Empire Strikes Back and co-producer for Return of the Jedi. Watts's collaboration with Lucas also encompassed the Indiana Jones franchise, where he was instrumental in the production of Raiders of the Lost Ark and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. His unique ability to merge creative vision with practical execution earned him widespread respect within the industry. Additionally, he contributed to other significant projects, including Who Framed Roger Rabbit and an American tale, Fievel Goes West. On October 1, 2024, Robert Watts peacefully passed away in his sleep at his home in East Sussex, England. His death signifies the conclusion of a remarkable era, yet his legacy endures through the films that continue to inspire and engage audiences globally. Robert Watts's influence on cinema will be cherished for generations, securing his status as a true icon in the film industry. Frankie Beverly Frankie Beverly, an iconic figure in R&B, significantly altered the musical landscape with his soulful voice and timeless hits. Born on December 6, 1946 in Philadelphia, Beverly's musical journey began in church, which later influenced his career with notable bands such as the Blenders and Mays, the latter of which he founded in 1970 under the guidance of Marvin Gaye. Beverly and Mays enjoyed enduring success with memorable tracks like Before I Let Go and Back in Stride. Although they did not achieve widespread pop acclaim, Beverly's impact on R&B is irrefutable, as evidenced by Beyoncé's 2019 rendition of Before I Let Go. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, Mays became a staple on the R&B charts, releasing acclaimed albums such as Golden Time of Day in 1978 and We Are One in 1983. Beverly's rich vocals and Mays' smooth rhythms cultivated a dedicated fan base, enabling extensive touring and creative freedom despite evolving musical trends. He always valued the deep connection with his audience, often describing their concerts as profound experiences. In 2024, Beverly announced his retirement and led Mays on a farewell tour. That same year, a street in his Philadelphia hometown was renamed Frankie Beverly Way in recognition of his significant contributions to music. He passed away peacefully on September 10, 2024, at the age of 77, leaving a legacy that will continue to inspire future generations. Herbie Flowers 
Herbie Flowers was a renowned English musician known for his expertise in bass guitar, double bass, and tuba. He played with various bands including Blue Mink, T-Rex, and Sky, and was a highly sought-after session musician. Flowers made significant contributions to recordings for artists such as Elton John, Camel, David Bowie, Lou Reed, Roy Harper, David Essex, Al Cooper, Brian Ferry, Harry Nilsson, Cat Stevens, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. Notably, he provided the bass for Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds. His most iconic bass line was for Lou Reed's 1972 hit, Walk on the Wild Side, featured on the album Transformer. By the late 1970s, Flowers had played bass on approximately 500 hit recordings. Residing in Ditching, East Sussex, Flowers founded the community choir Shoreham Singers by Sea in September 2009, which grew to over 150 members, followed by the establishment of the Ditching Singers in September 2010. Born on May 19, 1938 in Isleworth, Middlesex, England, Flowers began his musical journey in 1956 when he was conscripted into the Royal Air Force, initially serving as a band playing the tuba for nine years. He later took up the double bass to earn his junior technician stripe and subsequently transitioned to the bass guitar. After completing his military service, he played in several Dixieland jazz bands during the early 1960s before discovering modern jazz. In 1965, he was hired as a bandsman on the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth, where he was inspired to purchase a solid body electric bass after hearing one at a New York nightclub. He acquired a Lake Placid Blue 1960 Fender Jazz Bass from Manny's Music in New York City for $79. In the late 1960s, Flowers established himself as a prominent session musician, collaborating with notable record producers including Shel Talmy, Mickey Most, Steve Rowland, Richard Perry, Gus Dudgeon, and Tony Visconti. In 1969, he co-founded the band Blue Mink, contributing to their hit Melting Pot, which achieved a Note 3 position on the UK singles chart. He was also involved with the early heavy rock group Rumpelstiltskin, as well as CCS and the final lineup of T-Rex, alongside Dino Dines. In 1979, following his participation in the annual A Song for Europe contest, where he performed Mr. Moonlight with his band The Daisies, he became a co-founder of Sky, a band that found success in both the United Kingdom and Australia. Additionally, Flowers is recognized for writing the novelty hit Grandad for Clive Dunn in 1970. He revealed that the inspiration for the song came while he was using a beginner's guide to composition. After struggling to find a catchy hook, he called his friend Ken Pickett, and the sound of the doorbell when Pickett arrived provided the perfect idea. Flowers passed away on September 5, 2024, at the age of 86. Terry Carter Terry Carter was born on November 5, 1939 in Los Angeles, California. Growing up in a vibrant, diverse environment in the heart of Hollywood, he was exposed to the entertainment industry from a young age. He attended Los Angeles City College and then transferred to the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, where he majored in theater arts. His education equipped him with the skills necessary to navigate the complexities of acting and storytelling. Carter's career began in the late 1960s. He started with small roles in television, gradually building a reputation for his talent. His early work included guest appearances on shows like The Mod Squad and The Twilight Zone, which allowed him to showcase his range and versatility as an actor. Terry Carter's breakthrough came with the iconic role of Colonel Ty in the original Battlestar Galactica series, 1978 to 1979. 
as the second in command to Commander Adama, his character played a crucial role in the series narrative, and Carter's portrayal brought depth and nuance to the role. The series, despite its short run, became a cult classic, and Carter's performance is still remembered fondly by fans. Carter's film career includes notable performances in several critically acclaimed movies. In The Last House on the Left, 1972, a horror classic directed by Wes Craven, he portrayed a character that added to the film's chilling atmosphere. His role in The Great White Hope, 1970, also garnered attention, showcasing his ability to tackle serious and dramatic themes. Carter continued to work in television throughout the 1980s and 1990s. He made guest appearances on popular series such as The A-Team, where he displayed his action-oriented skills, and Hill Street Blues, where his dramatic chops were highlighted. He also appeared in L.A. Law, reinforcing his presence in high-profile television projects. Terry Carter's journey through the entertainment industry is marked by a blend of talent advocacy, and dedication. With a career spanning several decades, he has made significant contributions as an actor, director, and producer, all while championing diversity and representation. His work continues to inspire both audiences and aspiring artists, ensuring that his impact will be felt for years to come. Carter died in New York City on April 23, 2024, at the age of 95. Ron Hale. Ron Hale is an accomplished actor recognized for his work primarily in television. He gained significant fame for his role as Alan Quartermain on the soap opera General Hospital, where he appeared for over 20 years, becoming a beloved character among fans. His portrayal contributed to the show's dramatic and engaging storylines. Ron Hale's career in acting began in the late 1970s, and he quickly became a recognizable face in television. His role as Alan Quartermain on General Hospital started in 1993 and continued until 2007, making him one of the longest-serving cast members. Alan was a complex character known for his ups and downs in the Quartermain family saga, which captivated audiences for years. In addition to General Hospital, Hale appeared in a variety of other television series, including guest spots on The Young and the Restless, Matlock, and Murder, She Wrote. His versatility allowed him to navigate between drama and lighthearted roles effectively. Hale also has a strong background in theater, having performed in numerous stage productions throughout his career. His training and experience in live performance have contributed to his skills in television and film. Aside from acting, Hale has taken part in various philanthropic efforts, often supporting causes related to health and wellness. He is known for his engaging personality and has maintained a positive rapport with fans and fellow actors alike. In recent years, he has continued to stay active in the industry, exploring new projects and opportunities, further solidifying his legacy in the world of entertainment. Hale died at his home in St. George, South Carolina on August 27, 2024, at the age of 78. Latest News Update our upcoming narrative focuses on a remarkable personality in Hollywood, celebrated for his dynamic characters and infectious enthusiasm. From his unforgettable performance as Ace Ventura to his striking role in The Mask, Jim Carrey has entertained audiences for many years. However, today we will not be revisiting his celebrated career or the numerous box office successes that established him as a cultural icon. Instead, we will explore a more intimate aspect of his life, characterized by significant self-reflection and considerable challenges. Before we proceed, we invite you to share your opinion. 
On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you evaluate Jim Carrey's acting abilities? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Jim Carrey, born on January 17, 1962, is a Canadian-American actor who gained prominence in the 1990s after honing his skills through stand-up comedy and minor roles. His major breakthrough occurred when he became part of the cast of In Living Color, 1990-1994 and shortly thereafter, his comedic talent catapulted him to fame. In 1994, he achieved remarkable success with three major hits, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber. His career continued to flourish with films like Ace Ventura. When Nature Calls and Batman Forever in 1995, establishing him as one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. While his humor has won the hearts of millions, Jim Carrey's abilities extend well beyond comedy. His performances in The Truman Show 1998 and Man on the Moon 1999 garnered critical acclaim, demonstrating his capacity to tackle serious roles. Carey received Golden Globe Awards for both films, further proving his versatility with Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind 2004, where he portrayed a man attempting to erase painful memories, leaving a profound impression. More recently, his portrayal of Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog 2020 reminded audiences that he still possesses the charisma that endeared him to fans. Jim Carrey, despite his widespread acclaim, has encountered significant personal challenges throughout his life. He has been candid about his experiences with depression, a subject he has never avoided. Initially dependent on Prozac, Carey ultimately decided to eliminate all medications, caffeine and alcohol in pursuit of better mental health. His openness regarding mental health issues has struck a chord with many, serving as a reminder that even those who appear to have everything can endure serious struggles. In 2017, during an interview at New York Fashion Week, Carey garnered attention for his enigmatic and philosophical remarks while promoting his documentary Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond. He reflected on losing his identity while portraying Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon, stating, There was no me, which raised concerns among fans about his mental well-being. However, in subsequent interviews, Carey clarified that his comments were meant to convey the emptiness of defining oneself through fame and public persona, emphasizing that genuine fulfillment originates from within rather than from external approval. Jim Carrey's journey with mental health has been one of profound self-exploration. For many years, he faced challenges with ADHD and depression, which nearly pushed him away from the spotlight. He came to understand that the effort to uphold a facade that did not align with his authentic self was draining. This realization allowed him to appreciate the transient nature of fame and the significance of living genuinely. Carey has adopted a more spiritual perspective on life, emphasizing the pursuit of inner tranquility and a sense of purpose beyond his acting career. In recent times, he has reduced his involvement in film, suggesting a possible retirement as he continues his path of introspection. His narrative highlights that beneath the humor and vibrant personas, there exists a man who, like many, is in search of meaning and equilibrium. His commitment to prioritizing mental health and embracing a more straightforward, fulfilling existence exemplifies his strength. What are your thoughts on Jim Carrey's journey? Has his candidness about mental health had an impact on you? We invite you to share your reflections in the comments below. And please like and share this video if his story resonated with you. Your participation enables us to continue showcasing meaningful narratives like this one. In a distinct sphere of performance, we honor Riki, who was born on May 20, 1940 in Thorpe, Wisconsin. His path into the realm of performance was both unconventional and profoundly motivating. Initially an English teacher, Riki grew disillusioned with an educational system that favored academic achievements over creative expression, prompting him 
him to transition into the arts. This courageous decision sparked a fervor that propelled him through five decades of remarkable work, establishing him as a beacon of commitment within the entertainment sector. After refining his skills at a drama school in Seattle, Ricky's extraordinary talent soon became apparent. His emotionally resonant performances in over 100 roles enchanted audiences, earning him recognition as one of the most captivating actors of his time. His role in Sam Shepard's Buried Child garnered him the esteemed Dora Mayer Moore Award, while his exceptional performance in The Gray Fox earned him a Genie Award. These honors reflected his remarkable ability to infuse depth and authenticity into every character he portrayed. Ricky's career was marked by critical success, with significant roles in productions such as The King Chronicle and Deep further solidifying his legacy. His unwavering commitment to his craft continued to inspire both contemporaries and younger artists with his enthusiasm and expertise. Gary Ricky passed away on September 23, 2024, at the age of 84, leaving behind a rich artistic legacy. His impact on the acting community persists, and his unforgettable performances stand as a testament to his extraordinary talent. Ricky's contributions to the arts will continue to inspire and resonate for generations, establishing him as a true icon in the entertainment industry.